Last year, I'm playing my ranked games, hovering between Diamond 1 and Grandmaster, and I'm stuck in this karmic wheel of promotions that I just can't seem to get out of. You win three games in your D1 promos, in your Master promos, rather, and then you lose two to get demoted from Masters back to D1, but you're not at D1 promos, you're at D1 90 LP, if you're lucky. And so now I've lost LP despite having gone three and two on my last two on my last five games. It's not looking good. Right? It feels like I'm just fighting against a current that I don't feel like I need to be dealing with. So somehow I do feel like I have to keep trucking through this. So I climb to masters get to gm and again the demotion things happens and so often it felt like at the critical moments where demotion would happen or promotion would happen the games were out of my control riot already acknowledges that dodging is an essential part of the game otherwise they wouldn't have attempted to nerf it and the matchmaking system for some reason sucks extra when you are in a promo series. I didn't want to have to deal with this anymore. I felt like I played more games of promotions in that season than actual games for my regular MMR and fed up with it, I quit it. And what did I do? Well, I still wanted to play League, so I made a new account. No boosts, no RP, no nothing, just playing League of Legends, loving it actually, playing Normals, playing ARAMs, Ultimate Spellbook, um, the one where you fire spells quickly, Earth Mode, Ultra Earth Mode, it was fun, it was great, except now I'm smurfing, and now I'm in smurf queue, I'm playing 8 minute queues in Normals, I'm getting 10 minute queues in ARAMs for winning ARAMs, it's, I don't know why it's happening, but there I am. And so now, I just want to play the game, right? I didn't come to Smurf to have 10-minute queues. I just want to play the game. And I don't go to places to wait if I don't have to, right? I go to the DMV because I have to. And I go to the IRS because I have to, right? All these places that I'm waiting in line, it's because there's no alternative. Well, there was an alternative. And it was ranked. And... Guess what? I was loving it here. I gotta tell you, I was loving the rank mode because the queues were snappy, the games were pretty good. I was smurfing, but there were some smurfs in there as well, so it felt like it was balanced out. So I was having a good time. I was soaring with that good time. We were at a 70% win rate, I think, at one point, with maybe 60 games, and then all of a sudden, brick wall promotion series again. I'd completely forgotten. The promo series were a thing because I was zooming past silver, gold, and plat, and now I'm at plat one having to do my diamond promos, and I am filled. I get my secondary role. I'm not auto-filled in promos. I get my secondary role, but I don't even have champions for my secondary role, right? I queued for ranked once I had enough picks all of jungle because I wanted to be able to counter, to first pick, to have the strong... I didn't have enough champions for other roles. And so the first game, it wasn't even that my champion pool was bad. I had a Chinese booster who's telling us, dodge this game, I'm going to make us lose. Nobody believed him. I'm not asking people to dodge, but I'm not, I'm not about to put my PayPal out there and start giving people money to dodge. You can't count on that. Even though it feels like that's where the game is headed. And then at that point, I'm going to get my account banned. Is that it? Are you going to ban my account for that? Because it feels like someone could make an argument that that's somehow win trading. But it's really you're being held hostage and you're just trying to have a good time and make sure that you get a good game. People are willing to pay for quality of a game. Maybe that's what this should be doing. We should introduce some way where you can play premium matchmaking and actually get out of the hellhole that the current matchmaking is. But that's an idea for later. The point now is that I lose that first game, and then the second one, I still get filled. I play fine, 
but then we got ragers and we lose and it feels like those games are out of my control that could have easily been avoided had it been just a regular matchmaking system game without the overlay of the divisions on top of it because matchmaking is carried out by the overlay underneath it, your MMR, your matchmaking rating. Every system uses that, and normally we had no overlay. It was just the numbers. We call that the ELO, 2500, right? The 3000 um, for Varelin Lord, ELO. So that was a fun time. But we are in the division times, and for a reason, right? I don't look at this and think, why is that? Have we been just... Has somebody make a, an incredible oversight and just stuck with a mistake that is frustrating for all these years? And I think that's wrong. I think what this is, is actually just the prioritization of short-term goals versus long-term, which there could be other data that would suggest that this is a better move than what I think should happen, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So... Division systems exist for a reason. And what do they offer that the ELO system does not? Well, for starters, there are artificial rewards, artificial incentives at divisions. No matter what people like, the flashy lights, the fact that you can tell others what ranking you are, the fact that you can shun others for being trash ranking, that you understand how good they are based on their MMR, that you see the borders, that you get little special icons for achieving it, little special recalls. There's a lot of different incentives for you to want to reach these goals even the professional teams look to your ranking if that's what you aspire to do if you're trying to be a pro right there's often these requirements that are division based so it's easy to categorize and segment people and have them identify themselves with this so there is a lot of positives to it in that sense now it also keeps you from playing keeps you playing the game much more because once you are past the point of i think it's once you're in diamond or maybe even plat one, demotions kick in. And so you have that weekly reminder that you got to play the game, right? You got that. You got to play the game. They try to do that already with your daily rewards, but those are often really confusing, especially because you don't know what the heck you're getting. But on the demotion and promotion, you understand that you're going to lose that hard earned division. And so... I think it keeps you playing the game. And ultimately, those people that are plat one or plat to hire are percentage of the player base that I think have already demonstrated that they are more than casual. Right? Casual is not just I'm going to randomly play normals with my friends. It's I'm going to try to win. Right, I'm probably looking at guides. I'm probably looking at streams. I'm probably fairly active in the community. So there is a certain extra level of devotion for people in that level and so it's not surprising that they would be willing to put up with more adversity because it is already something that they identify with and lastly i think it objectively has you play more games than if you didn't have that system right it actually can artificially put up to four more games inside your your matches, right? Because with an ELO system, if it were to be just, I don't know, 2,500 ELO or 2,000 ELO is uh, Masters and 1999 is D D1, then that is a single win separating those two and you could easily fall back and forth out of it depending on how well you're doing. But... In the division system, 1999 to 2000 is now separated by a best of five chasm that could have you play up to four extra games for the same win of a single point on the matchmaking system. And we don't know how the matchmaking system is entirely tied to the diamond and, and the tier system because we don't see that, but that's kind of what it achieves, right? It, it wedges more games into the divisions than there otherwise would have been and so you're increasing the games that the players are playing and so i think that's the value that the promotion series has i think it increases how many games are played and increasing the games that people play at a higher level that already have shown commitment i think ends up probably with higher returns on skin sales 
um, right? That's the main money that Riot is making. So higher player retention higher is going to lead to higher skin sales, which it leads to higher profits. And that's it. You don't need anything more. But I think they do. I think you do. Because maybe that worked at a time where the game was different, where the matchmaking was better. Uh, maybe I'm just thinking it was better, but it probably wasn't. Um, I think it has to go. Because player retention is something that is often prioritized right now. Just customer retention in general by companies in, that are working online. And... I find that we have to probably move away from retention at all costs and think more of what quality of retention looks like. What is a player that want to come back because of the joy that they experience, because it feels good to be a part of whatever they want to participate in, because they look forward to achieving a goal that they set for themselves within the game, as opposed to dealing with a frustration or dealing with avoidance, right? Instead of I want to climb, it's I want to avoid decaying. So I think that it's coming at a cost that the damage might already have been done. And to me, it seems like a short-sighted approach to generating more revenue that does not seem sustainable for the very long term. Now, the fact that you're making a move for the short term doesn't actually necessarily mean that you're short-sighted either, right? If you are planning a short-sighted move because you think that something will have and your accurate judge of that of the life of that is matching your actions, then you actually are acting accordingly. So I just think that this is something that if I were to see a longer term solution like a serious look or overhaul into the system, I think it could be much better in the long term. Because right now, I think that the player retention needs to come from a different place and it's coming from a place of frustration and that that's not a good long term solution. Those are my thoughts. What are yours?